Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome to another episode. My name is Dr. PJ and I just want to welcome all my brothers and sisters from all around the world. I just want to tell you that I appreciate you taking time out to study the Word of God with me. And this evening I just want to pray, Father God in the name of Jesus, touch each and every one of us. Give us spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and the anointing of your discernment of the Holy Spirit for us to rightly divide the Word of God in your truth, Father God. Father God, we thank you for this day, Father God. As I continue teaching your Word, continue anointing me and my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ's name, Yeshua Mashiach of Nazareth. Amen. And today is a continuation. Today we're going to continue exposing the rapture theory and the origins and the foundation of the rapture theory. I just want you to know that the rapture theory was originated in the Catholic Church. It was a Jesuit priest by the name Lacumza who wrote the book. And then that book was translated in different languages by another Catholic priest named Edward Irvin. And after that, right there in Scotland, in Port Glasgow, the third forerunner is going to be a 15-year-old girl that she was the first one who claimed she had a vision. But she wrote a letter before she died. She died at the age of 25 years old. Margaret MacDonald was born in 1815 in Port Glasgow, Scotland. And she died in the Aero Domini, 1840. She lived a very short life. But this young lady was used to receive a prophecy and she claimed the prophecy came from the serpent. She wrote a letter, an extensive letter. I, I had copies of that letter, but the one online that you can find if you Google, go ahead and Google Margaret MacDonald Visionary and you can read her letter. I put the letter that they have online so you can read it too on the video. Now let me start reading this letter to you and in in my mind I'm an analytic person. I'm a researcher. I like evidence, proof, witnesses and I like to follow that timeline and footprint. Evidence could be a fossil, it could be archaeological, it could be witnesses, it could be a scroll, it could be some manuscript, it could be an account and an event that took place in history. I just don't believe stuff on the surface when they tell me. I myself brought up in Jewish town, went to Christian church all my life. I never heard no one preaching about the rapture in the churches. But once they started paying them to bring this story forth, then everybody started making movies and stuff like that. The letter reads, and I'm going to read from the letter that she wrote at her deathbed while she was committed to a mental institution. And as I analyzed her letters for the last 20 years, 20 something years, I always felt like either she was demon possessed or just not in the right mind. And you have to see the pattern that they always use young virgin girls and young girls to say, I saw the virgin there and the virgin talked to me. I saw Fatima here. I saw Magdalene here. I saw Mary here. They always use little girls to point their finger and say they saw a shadow and the shadow was the virgin. And that is well known in South America, 
Central America in the Latin community. Now this took place in Scotland in the year 1830. We read, this is her confession from her deathbed. And listen carefully and analyze it for yourself. It was the first, it was first the awful state of the land that was pressed upon me. Now we're talking about a 15 year old child. All she will feel this press of her land as Scotland upon her shoulders. Think about it. I saw the blindness and the infatuation of the people to be very great. I felt the cry of liberty just to be the hiss as of the serpent to drown them in perdition. So she heard the serpent. Does it ring a bell in the garden? Eve say, the serpent beguiled me, the serpent. It was just no God. So she didn't get a revelation from God. She got it from the serpent. He said, I repeated the words. She repeated whatever the serpent told her. Whatever she was hearing, she repeated it. Now there is distress of nations and with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's heart falling failing them for fear so this is what she heard see once you start chanting because all that stuff about speaking in tongues is a lie they chant it's a chant once you start chanting you start repeating gibberish you summonings evil demons to come and possess you once you start chanting out you don't understand what you say. The other person standing next to you don't understand what you say. It's not a tongue. A tongue is language. In the manuscript, it is written language, lingua. So it's not a tongue. And what is a tongue? A lingua means French, Spanish, German, Irish, whatever Hindu language, whatever Chinese language. But it wasn't a language. It was a chant. And the more you repeat over and over alphabets, vowels, and stuff like that, you don't know what you're calling on. You don't know what you're saying. So that's, that's one of the doctrines that Edward Irving, who is a Catholic priest, taught the women and the men in this little group to do. And he, he said, this is the evidence of your salvation. You must speak in gibberish as a sign of the Holy Spirit, which is totally unbiblical. Amen? Because we're going by the word of God, by the word of truth. So as the letter continues, this young lady, 15-year-old child, say, now look out for the sign of the Son of Man. Here I was made to stop and cry out. She was made to stop and cry out. Oh, it is not known what the sign of the man, the son of man is. Unbiblical. The people of God think they are waiting, but they know not what it is. Now, I totally refute that. And I know it's demonic because God gave us the word and God gave us ministers, prophets to bring this word to us. God gave us a timeline. I know at least nine, over 1900 books were deleted out of the original Bible. We have still 66, but the 66 that's in the Bible is just good enough for us to work on it study it research it go back to the original tablets to the manuscript and to teach this word 
it takes a lot of years for you to spiritually dissect the word of God that's why God called people to teach he anoint his chosen people his chosen elect see everybody want to be the chief you see but nobody wants to be the Indian amen now we understand there are false teachers and false prophets in this world and they are claiming that this rapture theory that they conjure up through demonics and through disobedience number one Edward Irving took the books from the book of Lakumza and translated it in different language so he spread this rapture doctrine all around the world and the people that was even close to him say he was a school teacher he never said that he got any relationship with God or he had any encounter with Jesus or if he repented but he became a minister or ordained minister and he said he was going to do great things after he leap over a high fence and this is what she continued to say I felt this need to be revealed she felt that what she heard needed to be revealed and that there was a great darkness and error about it so she felt the great darkness and an error now she should have kept her mouth shut but in the situation and the condition where she was placed at she was in this occultic so you must understand that this evil gathering in Port Glasgow with Irv, Edward Irving people remember it started out with 13 women and 6 men and the head honcho leader was Edward Irving he is the one who founded the apostolic church he's the one who founded the Pentecostal church he's the one who started like if you don't speak in tongues you're not saved somebody gotta slap you on your back and they have to put, pull you down and put lay their hands on you because you got a demon because you're not chanting that's the right word chant he is also the one who encouraged the woman and told them they must interrupt while the pastor is teaching and prophesy in the middle of the teaching that was one of the charges that they pressed against him that he brought in his group and all of them started chanting and they started interrupting the ministration and prophesying they, they started disrespecting the, the, the man of God who was preaching and I've seen that behavior in churches I've seen that behavior everywhere now Think about it and I want you to read this letter for yourself carefully she said it was darkness she said it came from the serpent she said she only repeated the things that this serpent this satanic voice told her to repeat once you start chanting you get into a trance you see some of the manifestation is they giggle they laugh they roll on the floor and you know you can find that in voodoo if you go online you will find it in voodoo you see them manifesting in tongues you cite it in spiritual spiritistas and many other satanic worship that they they chant themselves and they start laughing they start saying things and they start even floating in the air it's demonic it's not of God nobody can show me where any prophets in the Old Testament and the New Testament ever did that and don't mention Acts chapter 2 because it did not happen that way amen but this is what she says she also saw things she saw she said I saw it was just the Lord himself descending from heaven with a shout I'm biblical the word doesn't say like the Lord is coming by himself from heaven with a shout the Lord is coming with his army and just the glorified man unbiblical satanic even Jesus 
but that almost as Stephen was. And we know Stephen was bludgeoned to death. He was beaten to death. So something is not right there. It sounds a little bit off the wall, but let's continue to read. Be filled with the Holy Ghost that they may look up. So she heard a voice telling her, and see the brightness of the Father's glory. I'm biblical. I saw the error to be that men think that it would be something seen in the natural eye, but it's spiritual discernment that is needed, the eye of God in his people. And we know that that's unbiblical because the word of God teaches totally different from that. What the rapture theory did, it bypassed all the biblical timeline and in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It bypassed all of that. It wiped it out completely. And they based salvation based upon this theory. Now, when I studied this letter, I found a lot of errors in it. As I saw as a, a study and I saw and I listened and I say something is not lining up with the word of God and it's a whole lot of stuff. People can take stuff out of content. People can take a sentence and just turn it into a little fragment and leave out the object, leave out the subject. <laughs> they say this is what the word of God said. No, it doesn't work like that. For anybody who know how to read and write, it doesn't work like that. And if you're speaking about the English language, the English language came from the Beowulf language. And the Beowulf language was so difficult because it's come from the book of spells. So what they did, they used German, French, Latin, Italian. All the English that we speak in this country is a made up language. And remember, the official language of the United States is not English. English is not the official language of this nation. Amen. You can ask any educator and they will let you know it's not the official language. We continue to read. I saw error to be. She said she saw error. She saw the people in error because everything is going to be spiritual. That's what she claiming. Like we're not going to see Jesus return those who are alive because the word of God said there will be people alive on earth. And she says she, 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 she knows like it's going to be all. Whatever she heard, she repeated. So she kept on repeating everything that she heard the serpent say to her. And you can continue to read the letter. But I'm going to expose some things that are very important to us today. Let's turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 13. I'm reading from the King James Version. And I read, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign and a wonder, and the sign and a wonder come to pass, where he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. That's what the word of God say. Anything that any teacher of the word of God, any prophet, prophetess, tell you have to line up with the word of God. I'm not, I'm not saying half a verse or half a sentence or a fragment. It must give you the subject and the object. And the subject that I'm reading from this Deuteronomy 13 is those people who goes around here saying they have a dream and they have a prophetic word for you, but it doesn't line up with the word of God. They will tell you the prophetic word, your husband coming tomorrow. He's dressing with a red shirt. That is not a prophetess of God or a prophet of God. 
that is someone who is a soothsayer or a diviner. They're under the spirit of divination. Amen. In verse 5 it say, And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in so shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee and that's what the word of God teaches you got to prove it the proof must be in the pudding anybody ministering to you lies you have a re a right to go back and question you have a, if they if they cannot prove it now I want you to prove it I want you to go online I want you to research you're gonna do your homework because everybody who knows me and being around me even in college and school and university they want to be in a group there's just six of us for the masters they say no I want to be with her to so the professor have to say I will pick who gonna be with her <laughs> you see what I mean because I'm a bookworm I'm gonna research then y'all do the typing and the presentation and I'm gonna sit back that's the type of person I always be amen and we will continue in the book of first Timothy chapter 5 we read verse 12 and 13 having damnation because they have cast off their first faith and with all they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house and not only idle but tattlers mean gossipers slanderers also and busybodies speaking things which they are not so we find a lot of people they go on social media they go stand up in the church they interrupt the the, the preaching but they don't know what they're talking about they say they're prophesying to people on, online, but they don't know what they're talking about. Those people are not called by God. Those people have a soothsaying demon and a divination spirit. And you must be aware of this type of a spirit. They are diviners. They are dreamers of dreams. They dream up stuff. They conjure up stuff because they got a spirit ministering to them called doctrines of devils and demons. That been with Margaret MacDonald she was instructed to lie about this vision and to claim like it was God but she in her heart knew it was the serpent now all of you no offense who believe in the rapture theory are under the Catholic dogma because it was the Catholic Church and all of the Catholic priests and the Catholic members who came up with the rapture theory from Lacumsa to to Edward Irving to Margaret MacDonald to Mary Campbell to the MacDonald brothers all of them including John Darby which I will expose all of them together are the ones who put this conjure of the rapture theory and the rapture theory is basically for the Antichrist to prepare you to bow to a false Christ now the words may sound good but they do not line up with the Word of God when you read this letter make sure that you are a student of God like me I'm a student I'm still sitting at Jesus feet if you're not a student of the word you will be destroyed because the devil have to take as many people with him to receive the mark of the beast and that mark of the beast have a lot to do with the rapture theory I'm only teaching don't get mad I'm not throwing stones be not deceived God is not mock whatever man sow that shall he reap the devil is after those people he wants to implant the rapture theory so when the Antichrist come and he say I come to fly you away you run behind him and then you will deceive now the Word of God teaches us in the book of 2nd Timothy chapter 2 15 study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth in order for you to refute me 
you must study the word of God because a prophet can only be rebuked by not a prophet of God a teacher of the word only can be rebuked by not a teacher so it's all about the anointing of God and your obedience I'm only showing you the way I'm blowing the trumpet because I'm a watchman I'm a watchwoman your blood will not be on my hand I'm blowing the trumpet this is information that you need to know in order for you to be safe totally safe from the wickedness of Satan now you have to understand that these people here in they started in Scotland they want us to believe like them they want us to follow them and all of these Catholic priests and 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 and, and novices and, and and nuns that they put out there to speak in in, in gibberish and they came from 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 the from the Rosenat parish and these people from Isabella and Mary Campbell from all of them together Margaret MacDonald the little sister all of them were Catholic from Edward Irving to Henry Drummond to John Nelson Garvey to Benjamin Willis Newton the Plymouth Brethren all of these people were Catholics they were not Protestant people they didn't believe in the to study in the Word of God but one of them was a scholar John Nelson Darby you know he was a scholar so I will be exposing him and his teaching and his occultic teaching that is tied into the Freemasonry because he did both so you see I pray for you today that you will receive knowledge because even in this vision she said the serpent told her that this Christ in us will lift us up he is the light this only thus that are alive in him that will be caught up and what the word caught up mean in the manuscript it mean numa and numa mean the spiritual body and I'm gonna just give you a, a, a preview of the spiritual body just take a minute and this is gonna be simple in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 you can finish read it on your own it say and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and the righteous shall be girdled of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reign and let me show you the, the millennium the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them mean like we will be in a different body right here on earth we will be transformed that numa body would not be like bloodthirsty where the animals can smell it that flesh body will be tr instantly transformed in the millennium so don't believe the hype study that you may find yourself approved many are called and few are chosen the chosen people of God the elect of God was ordained from the foundation of the earth and it says here and the cow and the bear shall feed and your young ones shall lie down together and eat like straw like an ox so there will be no more blood sucking there will be no more flesh so also the Lord say 
in verse 9 they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea and in that day shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. 